The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Yes, check please, people. It's all about licking your plate. The food was just fabulous. I should be in psychoanalysis for the amount of money I spend in restaurants. I had a horrible experience. I don't even think we were at the same restaurant. And everybody, I'm sure, saved room for those desserts. You better. Hi, I'm Leslie Sirocco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents, just like you, review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now, if you missed a show, you can visit the website to watch past episodes or download them via podcast, or you can catch them on demand. This week, we have another three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and we send the other two to go check them out and see what they think. Textile painter Nicole Lewis takes comfort in the hidden garden found at the end of the short brick path down an alleyway off of Main Street. She admires the still life in the California cuisine presented at her pick. And Brett Eilers, a political advocacy writer, campaigns for his spot. He's ready to stand up to any opponent who challenges its unusual setting, noisy atmosphere, and basic cuisine. It's a place to get a workout and eat. But first, former mayor of the city of Pinole, David Cole, shows up early for drinks at the buzzing bar of his pick. He says it's the place to see and be seen and to forget that you're not in San Francisco. You're in Pinole at a place called the Pear Street Bistro. I've started since I was 12. My father opened his first restaurant in 84 here in Pinole as well and uh, started out helping him doing tables, busing tables, washing dishes, and everything a small family-run business does. Parachute's concept came about because, you know, after my father passed away, I, I wanted to have something of my own, and uh, this opportunity came about. Well, Pinole was the first choice because we wanted to make sure that our community had a restaurant for the people who live here to dine out at, and a little bit more upscale so they didn't have to drive to Walnut Creek or Berkeley or San Francisco. So we decided that we'd do the Pear Street Bistro right here in downtown Pinole. The food's changed a lot in the last five years. We started off with French, with a lot of French lingo on the menu, terminology that most people didn't understand. And today we serve California comfort food, using the local ingredients that are available, fresh, everyday meats and seafood, and you know, just making food that people really want to eat and uh, can probably make at home, but much easier to go out to dine. Okay, so you have a lot of clout, David, in Pinole, don't you? When you walk down the street, they all say former mayor? Absolutely. People bow down and <laughs> throw rose petals. <laughs> all right. Well, tell us about Pear Street Bistro. This is a place that's charming and elegant. Uh, you feel in every way that you're in San Francisco, uh, but it's in the East Bay. And uh, so you don't have any of the commute. You don't have to get on 80. You don't have to pay a toll to get across the bridge. You can put that money into your dining experience and enjoy some great wines and good food. What's your favorite dish? Do you have one? I love just about everything. I kill for the lobster bisque uh, oh, wait, when, it's on the, <laughs> when it's on the menu. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. All right. Now, you mentioned drinks because they do have quite an extensive yes. and very well-priced wine list, I might add. I, I think so. The Justin Cab is one of my absolute favorites there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think you actually have to get it by the bottle, but I think it's well worth it. Pretty good deal. All right. What was your experience, Nicole? Well, I did have to travel 80 and cross the bridge, <laughs> but I didn't have to pay the toll until I, I went back home. Yeah. Well, uh, I had never been to Pinole before, so it was an experience. Um, my husband and I went. We went for lunch because we didn't want to really have to deal with traffic and stuff. And we walked in, and everybody was very friendly. Um, there was a beautiful bar when you walk in. Choices on the menu I thought were rather extensive. Um, we saw a three-course fixed-price lunch, so we ordered one of those, and I thought for $16, that's a pretty that's good, good bang mm -hmm. for the buck. Um, and you had a choice of like super salad, and then one of like three entrees, and then I guess whatever the chef selection for dessert was. Um, so we got that. We also ordered an appetizer of crab cake, mm -hmm. um, and we ordered a pizza with, which I must say was the best thing on the menu. 
It was very uh, flatbread like. Right. It had a ton of caramelized onions, which I love. Um, uh, really heaping helping of uh, blue cheese or gorgonzola, I think is what yep. they used. And do you eat and pizza? Are you a pizza fan there? I love it, and that's yeah. their signature uh, pear uh, pizza, and it's yeah, wonderful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I love an Italian sausage mm -hmm. with yeah, the arugula right. as well. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely Brett, phenomenal. this is what you had, the, the <coughs> pizza? No, I had the, uh, my favorite thing by far was that uh, av avocado and Dungeness crab yeah. salad, and they have it all with aioli all around it, and it's, you know, they put it in a, yep. a juice glass and flip mm -hmm. it upside down and it was just it's a presentation was nice and tons of crab and mm -hmm. as an appetizer it's good yeah. to have something that's plentiful yes right. and then um, I liked everything I had the rainbow trout fantastic where do you get rainbow trout that seems yeah. like you know river runs through it you gotta go like <laughs> Idaho I mean, can you get that here in the place <laughs> um, and what are some of the other dishes that you enjoy the short ribs are just fall off the bone beautifully done mm -hmm. um, one of the things that uh, the chef there does is the sauces any reduction any sauce mm -hmm. that you see get that item because those sauces are going to bring out the flavors of your food um, and I think that's one of the keys that you do chicken and ribs and you do all these basic California comfort foods, but you put the right sauce with it, the right reduction. And, and you it can just sop it up yes. with the bread. And, and the bread is very nice. Sourdough. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, Nicole, she's kind of over there shaking her head. And we'll get to atmosphere and things. What, what about the rest of the dishes for you? Well, I have to say, like I said, the signature pizza was great, but almost everything else we ordered was a miss. Ah. I, it was interesting that you said that the crab appetizer you had had a lot of crab in it because the crab cake that we had had so little crab in it. Mm -hmm. it. I mean, it looked lovely, and I have to say the jicama slaw that came with it was very tasty, but the crab cake itself just was mostly filler. Where's the crab? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, That's yeah. how we felt. Well. And then the onion soup that came with the three course. It was so salty, and I love salt. And I was really surprised because I could not even mm. eat the soup, oh. nor could my husband. Right. Yeah. And dessert now, you confess to me you're a dessert holic. So. Yes, absolutely. We had the chef selection of the day, which came with the fixed price, and it was um, it looked like a layer of ganache, maybe a layer of white chocolate mousse, and then a layer of cake. And I can sum it up by saying I had one bite and I gave the rest to my husband, who oh. is more inclined to eat things, uh, you know, that are just put in front of him. The signature item that you missed that you would have loved is the molten chocolate cake. Oh, see, I love molten and chocolate cake. And it is just, cake. it is really molten. You cut into that, but uh, on the prefixed, I'm sure it wouldn't be there. But mm -hmm. if you got that on the side, you would have loved it. I've, right. I've not heard anyone not love it. All right, so there I'm you sorry, go. I'm you didn't no. consult the mayor before you <laughs> went. I'm sorry so. if I had known the mayor prior to going to see. I'm sure I was there. I'm sure I was, I sure, I'm sure I was <laughs> there. You made his card, you get some comments. <laughs> I'm here for David's spot. I'm here at David's party. All right, so if people want to go, why don't you um, give us a quick summary of, of the I'd place? I'd say a wonderful, bustling place so you don't have to fight traffic. Uh, it, it's worth getting to the East Bay to it, try something different. All right, Nicole, your thoughts? Um, I think it would probably be a great place to go at night and sit at the bar and have the signature pizza, have a cocktail, and listen to some music. Okay. What about you, Brett? It was easy to get to, and it was a big surprise for me. I, I had a great time. I, I'll stop again, I believe. Okay. Excellent. If you would like to try it, it's Pear Street Bistro on San Pablo Avenue in Pinole. The telephone number is 510-741-8875. It's open for dinner every day with lunch Sunday through Friday. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $45. Next, Nicole Lewis lives to eat. She goes at any time to enjoy an afternoon or evening of dining in the charming courtyard of her pick, which reminds her of Tuscany. It's tucked away off Sacramento Street in Laurel Heights, and it's called Sociale. People oftentimes ask me why it is that I uh, joined the restaurant business, and I oftentimes say ignorance and stupidity. We started Sociale 
five years ago. A week after we opened, September 11th occurred, but Sochale quickly became a kind of neighborhood gathering spot. People came home from work and didn't want to turn the television on. Uh, they wanted to be around their neighbors, um, kind of be in a communal setting, and that is quickly what Sochale became. Our chef Tia Harrison took over the kitchen three years ago and started doing some great things in the kitchen that people don't necessarily know when they're looking at the food on their plate. For example, we work with a, a, a farm in South Carolina that, that grows uh, corn that goes into our polenta and we'll call them up and they'll actually pick corn from a plot, grind it and send it to us a week later. So it's things like that that Tia is doing that go unnoticed. Okay, Nicole, you live to eat, you, you love to eat, and this is a really satisfying place, isn't it, Sociale? On many different levels, yeah. It's, it's like a little hideaway in the city, and so you walk, as you very well described, <laughs> you walk down the alley, and in the front is this wonderful little terraced courtyard, and you can sit out there, and if you sit out there at night, they have the heat lamps, and they even have an awning. We went there once for a big family dinner. We sat outside, and it was raining, and you could hear the raindrops on the awning, and it was just, it was so beautiful. Or you can sit inside, and it's very charming and quaint, and the food is always is wonderful. We started with bone marrow, which I know is over the top decadent, but it, it's so rarely on menus that with the when, figs, the bone marrow with, with the, the figs? figs, and if, you know, you just digging out every last morsel. It's so funny because we ordered that, and then the people who sat down after us on both sides of us saw it. They were like, "Oh, they ordered it too," because it looked so enticing. And when I go with my children, their burgers are amazing. Mm. It's not a place that you would think of for burgers, but they they're thick and juicy, and they have these uh, Italian-style fries that have some nice parsley on it, and wonderful olives come with it. Um, but also, their pastas are house-made, the sauces are thick and wonderful. Um, and we, a young chef, uh, Tia Harrison, is very yeah, young. She's uh, uh, under 30, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but she knows her stuff. Makes her handmade <laughs> pasta. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. what about your experience there at Sociale? I would agree. Getting there, it was interesting because it was literally, I, I describe it as walking through a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. And when we parked out front, um, we saw the awning, and we we're like, "Where is this place? Is it in, and is that the awning? Ooh, what are we? Do what are we in so for like it the here?" the Alice in Wonderland yes. thing going. <laughs> and you go down, and as long as you're not in too high heels, you can navigate those bricks. But yeah. you get down there, charming courtyard opens up, beautiful setting. We sat outside, absolutely wonderful. The the fried olives. Those wonderful. Yeah. I get a signature uh, dish yeah. of there, yeah. stuffed with cheese. And that jumped off. The, <laughs> the other thing that jumped off the menu for me was the Brussels sprouts, and we wanted to order those for an appetizer. Mm, we ordered those as well. Um, and you have to have those on the side. Mm -hmm. I, I love Brussels yeah. sprouts. Yeah. And, and what about you? What did you have to eat there, Brett? Uh, I had the um, the duck. With, oh, the parpadel with, yes. the, with the duck yeah, with the Yeah, that was so rich. That's one of their signature dishes. Terrific. Mm -hmm. um, I had the wild boar. The risotto. Was, yeah. yeah, with the risotto, that was just fabulous. Yeah, the wild boar was my favorite of all those, but... Uh, and what about terrific. wine? Did you, because they have a, an eclectic... Um, uh, it, it, it was, it took some time wonderful. to mm -hmm. make your choice because I think there were so many things on the menu to try and figure out. And we did end up finally asking for a little help from mm -hmm. our waiter and um, and so we got a very nice bottle. We ended up having two of them because it was very good. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised at you. Well, I just, that. you know, I it's... Thought, so it then were, were your high heels hard to navigate <laughs> outside? Getting of, back yeah, up, yeah. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. My wife carried me, so it was fine. Um, we ended up, there were five of us in our party that evening, and we had, I think, seven main dishes, and there were at least half of them that were that were good. The pasta, mm -hmm. by far the star of the show, mm -hmm. homemade mm -hmm. spinach pasta, not overly dressed, mm -hmm. uh, with the fresh corn, the heirloom tomatoes in there. I mean, it was beautiful, right. wonderful uh, pasta, but like the, the lamb, I think it was, um, we also felt very salty. Um, oh, no. So there were a couple of dishes that were I'm just overly salt salty. I'm taking salt away from you two over here. What is it over on this side of the table with the salt? Yes, yeah. They're pepper people. <laughs> Definitely. Pepper people, that's it. There you go. Don't that you want to be a pepper? It. I guess so. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. dessert. I'm going to start with you for the dessert and get um, last to you because you're my dessert gal. Oh, oh. Well, the, the best thing I had was the pear in a circle. Like a tartlet? Yes. It was in, a rustic yeah. tart. I yes. had it too. That yeah. is, it's not sweet. Not a traditionally mm -hmm. shaped tart, right? Right, yeah. And it's all 
not too, it's pastry, it's flaky, it's mm -hmm. not too buttery, it's not too sweet, and it's just, I mean, that's it. Three of those, forget the entree, just eat that. <laughs> to die for. And the, you forgot to mention the spectacular mascarpone cream on the pear tart that is just <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and I have to say, if you're a chocolate fan, and I know mm -hmm. you are, yes. Death by Chocolate, <laughs> there is a very uh, unique wine that they have on their wine list um, in the dessert section, oh. and it's uh, called Brocchetta di Acqui, and it's a red sparkling wine from northern Italy, and you can get it in the half bottle. Mm -hmm. And with chocolate, there is no better match. It's oh, like I drinking will try strawberries. That next time. So, <laughs> all right, since this is your spot, why don't you wrap it up for us? A wonderful place to go in the city and still feel like you're in the Italian countryside and great food, um, spot on service, wonderful wines, just kind of an every occasion and special occasion place to go. All right, David? Warm and friendly, great atmosphere, a little off the beaten path for me if I'm coming into the city I don't know that I venture that far out. Some misses on the menu, uh, but all in all a pleasant experience. Okay, and what about you Brett? Uh, I love that. I admired the brickwork, and from, <laughs> it had me from there. I just put a brick patio in and all those little all the way down. It's good. I think it's a charming place. Uh, I think it'd even be better if it were raining, like you mentioned, because, you know, it's so well shielded, but you still are outside. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a good place to go. All right. If you would like to try the restaurant, it's Sociale on Sacramento at Spruce in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-921-3200. It's open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday and dinner only on Monday. Reservations are recommended and the average tab per person without drinks is around $30. Brett Eilers works up an appetite by bowling a few rounds at his pick. He says you can strike it lucky, you can belly the ball, that's a bowling term, or fill your belly at the Presidio Bowling Center Grill in the Presidio in San Francisco. The Presidio Bowling Center has a really wide variety of customers. Um, anyone from three to probably 83 comes through here to bowl a game. This bowling center was opened in 1989 and it was the second bowling center that was actually here from the Presidio. And these first 10 pin centers here were actually from the original place. And what's really neat about it is if you go to our bar and grill, you can actually get a beer that's shaped just like this. I think everybody who comes to the Presidio Bowling Center to go bowling, get something to eat and they discover our food and discover that it's, it's really very good. The most popular food item here is probably cheeseburger and fries and they'll eat on a busy day, 80 to 100 hamburgers or cheeseburgers. They'll wager a beer or they'll wager a burger or a meal or a next trip they come that somebody has to buy them their dinner. But uh, it's fun. I think a lot of people come to the Presidio Bowling Center to bowl and then they decide that they're gonna eat. They don't want sushi or something really fancy. They wanna get some good greasy fries and uh, bowl a couple games and have a couple beers. So beer and bowling and fries have always been a, a main staple of, of bowling in the United States and uh, we try and continue that every day. Okay, Brett, belly the ball. You do that a lot? Well, sure, yeah, you gotta have a resting place. It's a heavy ball. <laughs> I you don't look like you have a big belly, though. Well, that's because I haven't had the little Budweiser's that shape, are shaped like the bowling pin in the, <laughs> in the glasses there. I've been out there three times in the, in the recent future. I've had, in that time, everything on the menu. There's yeah. about three things. There's about three things. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is a bowling alley with a, with a, yeah, with a, a, a little mini restaurant. A, little a nice place on. to eat and okay. exactly what you want. You want a good cheeseburger or you want a good garden burger. You want fries or rings. Or both, and what do you want to dip them in? Ranch. All you right. got that? You got everything you need there, <laughs> and it's uh, prepared just for you. <laughs> and what about the beer list? Because you're obviously a beer and bowling kind of guy. Oh yeah, yeah. It's that's that fine line. It's like you can get a lot of strikes if you have 2.3 beers in you or whatever. Just like with pool, you know, playing pool. 
it's hard to maintain that. Is that the scientific, it's 2.3 beers? <laughs> for actually, bigger, for bigger, yeah. That and makes you strike it lucky? I think so, mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. Strike right. or spare <laughs> or, you know. All right, well, I like, you know, this is what we love about this show is that you get all sorts of restaurants. So, you know what, what did you guys think of the Bowling Alley Coom restaurant? I love all things fried. Okay. Uh, and so for me, I was in hog heaven. There was uh, at least 32 different fried choices. Uh, I, we, we tried 30 of them, because I like to save something <laughs> for the next time I go back. Yeah. Sure, sure. But, um, you have a discriminating just, palate. No, the, the fried zucchini was maybe my favorite. It's a healthy place. Uh, I had <laughs> vegetables. I had a vegetable, and my exactly. mom would be happy. Um, it's like I, so. I was disappointed there was no great wine list, wow. but there is some 50 some odd beers to choose from. <laughs> I'm not a big beer drinker though, so we, we stuck with something a little more mundane, but uh, it was a fun atmosphere. Did you bowl? I did bowl, and the food didn't help. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I needed another few games to maybe get, right. get up well, to Well, we'll work on this belly in the ball <laughs> thing for you. All right. All right, Nicole? She's over there laughing, right. chuckling, not sure. I like you, Brett, and I really I know you don't like salt, but you didn't taste the salt till later. Well, I have to tell you, I had an adventurous group of family members who were willing to go to the bowling alley for dinner. And so there were eight of us, and we tried mostly burgers. Uh, one of my sons did have a pastrami sandwich, which she said was okay. Yeah, the hot pastrami yeah, sandwich. Yeah, and That's my other son had some favorites. miniature corn dogs, oh, and yeah. he said those were okay oh, yeah. too. Uh -huh. But I have to say, for the rest of us, we ordered a variety of burgers, and there's the quality, I, I like a dive as much as anybody else, but the quality of the meat to me was inedible. And we. But you were eating it. Don't savor it. You gotta <laughs> eat it. Your vein is up. You gotta I was get to not the lane. savoring it's, it, no, trust it's, me. It's, it's, it's you grab a bite and then you bowl, so yeah, you can't yeah. really stop and enjoy. What do you think yeah. belly the ball point. means here, sister? <laughs> well, we couldn't go bowling because we got there at 6 and at 7.15 oh, they, they were having a private party. Right. Oh. Okay. So we couldn't or something do that. In the, in the but so you really I have to time it, though. That's a good thing to know. You right. have to call and make sure that if you want to bowl, you've got to time that. Yes, but I have to tell you, at 7.15 we were eating dinner on Chestnut Street. <laughs> oh, really? No, and, and, you yeah. didn't have the salad, the fried zucchini? No. <laughs> the no, salad. no. I don't know that it should be the Presidio <laughs> grill so much as it should be the deep fry, because uh, the only grilled item, like we had the, the, the tuna melt, and it was, oh, I'm not sure that yeah. it was tuna or a melt, but because um, they just didn't leave it on the grill long enough. Like maybe they were too busy with all the fried stuff we ordered. But it was so much fun that none of that stuff mattered. And I especially love the swivel seats where you could push back from your seat on this chair and then it swiveled. I thought it was like a game that I was on a ride yeah. or something. As, you're, as you're waiting, yes. Yeah. Forced politeness, your chair tucked itself back mm -hmm. in more securely than you would ever do. And you're like, where is I sitting? Yeah. And there's yeah. pink balls there too for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Yeah, and, I was going to say, this is not really one of those restaurants that we can talk about what's the noise level because it's, right. it's noisy. Noisy. <laughs> yeah. um, what's the atmosphere? It's bowling lanes. Yeah, it's bowling lanes. We can certainly it. talk about the service. The service. They call your number, you go get it. And so I was pretty good. Um, <laughs> I was quick. I was I was on it. Did You're you tip in. yourself? I, I was a good tipper. <laughs> all right. Um, but I the fun atmosphere of, of the, the the all the graphics that come up on the on the computer monitors that all the courts that come and they they slice the 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 pins up they the, all the different fun stuff it's really entertaining so you're not just sitting there looking down at everybody else while they're waiting to reset your pins there's all this fun stuff going on so a kids um, place very kid friendly obviously Absolutely. i think yes. so yeah, For yeah. Sure. yeah. party were, friendly all, all right so if people want to go though i mean convince everybody they need to go i think you know this is a place where you can go you can have a good time you can make a racket you don't even have to you know mess up your own clothes you get shoes when you're there <laughs> And, uh, and <laughs> if you time it right when you walk in starving that you can overlook certain, it's going to be the right food when it finally lands in your plate and you eat it and you enjoy it and then you go and work most of it off throwing a cylinder down a lane until you make more noise. All right. And then you're free to go. Free to go. Okay. <laughs> Nicole? Come on, uh, zucchini and ranch. That's next for you. <laughs> I like zucchini and ranch. I, maybe I just didn't notice it on the menu. <laughs> I would go for the uh, bowling and um, for the beer if I drank beer. So somebody else will be drinking my beer. Uh, but I would skip the burgers. Okay. <laughs> And what about you? I loved it, had a great time. I would bring my son back in a heartbeat. Um, if you're out in Chrissy Field area, if you're out walking across the Golden Gate Bridge, stop in, you're gonna have fun. Okay. If you would like to strike it lucky, 
Try the Presidio Bowling Center Grill on Moraga in the Presidio of San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-561-2695. It's open every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No reservations are needed, and the average tab per person without drinks is a cool $10. Well, I want to thank my guests on this week's show. You guys were great. I'm just going to have you stay here. Is that yes, okay? Yeah. You can just be permanent guests. <laughs> <I'm coming. laughs> we featured David Cole and the Pear Street Bistro in Pinole, where everyone complimented the service. The food was enjoyed by Brett. However, it came in for some criticism from Nicole, who thought it was uneven. Nicole Lewis's spot of Sociale on Sacramento in San Francisco was more hit than miss for David, who thought the location was great and the service, but the food was mixed. While Brett had a wonderful evening and relished everything he ate. And Brett Eilers and the Presidio Bowling Center Grill in San Francisco also met with some mixed opinions as David accepted the concept and loved it, while Nicole was very disappointed with the food but thought the beer list extensive, even though she doesn't <laughs> drink beer. Now, for all you wine lovers, did you know that there's a KQED wine club? You can find great discounts on international wines, recipes, and a lot more if you go to kqed.org slash wine club. So check it out. And don't forget to join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I hope to see you then. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. This show is available in high definition, on demand, and via podcast. For additional information on the restaurants featured, to comment, or to apply to be on the show, go to our website at kqed.org slash check, please. A KQED television production.